Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how I built a second brain using Tiago Forte's para method in Visual Studio Code using a plugin or an extension called Dendron. So before we begin and take a look at Dendron and how I've built the second brain using that and the notes um, that are in there, I wanna briefly pause and explain the difference between building a second brain in the para method versus the Zettelkasten method and smart notes. Let's start with smart notes. So smart notes is a bottom up approach to note taking. And it's really good in an academic sense or a research sense where you're trying to construct or understand or build a particular area of expertise or knowledge around something. An example of that in the past that I've used is trying to learn the Go programming language and building a knowledge structure and bolting on or integrating each little piece of knowledge that I find into this knowledge structure. And then the promise or the idea is after a while that knowledge structure will emerge and you can use those as your projects or the foundation for your projects. And you let your, your interests kind of accumulate into these knowledge uh, buckets or trees rather and branches that you can turn into some kind of an artifact later down the road. Now, the problem with that approach for me is a lot of things in life that I do are project-based. I already know ahead of time what it is that I wanna do, and I simply want a way to organize the information as I go through the project and collect and maintain and uh, reference and keep for later reference what's most useful of that project. And that is the biggest difference between the smart notes and the para method. So the para method is the opposite of the smart notes in the sense that it is project centric and everything revolves around the projects that you do. Um, and how, what that looks like practically is notes start and collect around a project. So whether that be some kind of a coding feature that you're doing or a project around the house, you simply just create a folder for it and you shove all the information that you need for that particular project with that outcome in there. And then at the end of it, you review it and you start to reassess and reorganize the knowledge that you acquired during the project. But instead of getting in the way of delivering the results of that project, like the smart notes would, um, or not really knowing what that project might be until later down the road, which is super uncomfortable for me, um, someone that's really project centric, project focused, um, it does the opposite where you get to kind of select, target your project, collect the knowledge, distill it, and then move it where it makes sense. So with that brief explanation out of the way, I'll go ahead and dive into VS Code and Dendron and show you how I've got it set up and how some of the folders are some of the files have moved around in my para method. So here I am in Visual Studio Code and I have my second brain open and I have the Dendron extension installed in the tree view open. So Dendron, unlike most of the other systems, they, it doesn't use folders, it uses just files. And to give you an idea what, they, what I mean by that and what it looks like, is if you look at all my notes, they just have this prefix of P or A or R or whatever, and those correlate to the para method, which you'll see in a second, and then they have the name of the notes and then the, the sub notes. Uh, and Dendron uses these note names to create the hierarchy. So instead of creating folders and moving things around in folders and files, it really just uses this flat structure um, and then it uses the periods or the dots in between the names to create the hierarchy based on a namespace. And you can see that a little bit more clearly if we were to expand projects, what is a secure supply chain, uh, supply chain, and then you can see the notes. If I click on one of these, at the top you'll see the name, P, what is a, sec what is a secure supply chain, and then OSSSCCPractices.md. Um, that is the actual name of the file, but in the tree view, you can see that it has a hierarchy to it. So that's kind of like Dendron 101, just so you have an idea. There's also metadata in here that you can see that uh, changes the title and the name and stuff like that. You can see, you could also put tags in there, but that's neither here or there. I just wanted to show you that to show that what you're seeing here isn't actually file system folders. They're all flat files that have been um, brought into a hierarchy based on their name. And that is important because then it allows us to change the location of that note strictly by changing or just as easily as changing the name. So we don't have to move and move things around. This really helps me with my OCD <laughs> with uh, maintaining a good file system. So what I wanna do now is kind of walk through the notes that I have in these different folders and how they move from one folder to the next folder in the para method. I think that's the most useful thing that I can do for people that are coming in and trying to use 
Dendron um, or any kind of note-taking tool. Like I said, the Para method is a framework. I'm just using Dendron as an implementation of that. And I think it's really good for people that are in uh, software engineering or in tech in general because they're probably already using Visual Studio Code um, and they probably already know Markdown and they don't need another tool. So let's start with projects. So inside projects, I have four different notes. Some notes have notes underneath them, which is why you get the hierarchy there, and some notes don't. Um, these are my project notes, but I can also click on projects if there's something that I want to like remind myself of, of like overall the projects. Um, because like I said, everything in Dendron is just a file and you can modify those files. So in here, I just have some notes um, to myself around project focused learning, uh, a little quote that I got from building a second brain, which is the average person juggles five to 15 project. Mine's probably five. I start to get pretty stressed out or overwhelmed if I breach past five. Right now I have four and I'm doing okay. Um, but that's what's, uh, what is called my whip limit. So my work in progress limit. Um, so I just have some like random notes in there for myself. But if I click into some of these other ones, these are like future coming projects that I have um, that I'll start to work on next after these ones wrap up. But I've created a placeholder note in here and put some context for it. So these are some, some future work that I wanna do around Terraform. That doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry. I really just wanna show this so you can see how the work's moving through the system and not really focus on what the work is per se. Um, some more extensive ones that I've worked on, this particular project I've been working on for about two weeks and I have uh, quite a bit of knowledge that's accumulated in here and some of it's that, that's already moved out into different uh, folders inside my para method and I'll show you that. So this is a notary GitHub action project. It's if you don't have any idea what that is, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. What's more important is you understand how these notes are flowing through the system and not necessarily what the notes are. So in here I have my first top level note. So this is a project note. And in here is just kind of like generic information that I have about the project, some subtasks that I'm doing for it, um, some different reminders and stuff for when it's done, and then some notes about the tech stack. So really this is kind of like a scratch pad dumping ground for kind of the miscellaneous high level overview tasks um, and information about the project. Neat of that I have kind of the work that's been doing, that I've been doing. So there was kind of two main phases of this project. One, I had to deploy the infrastructure and two, I had to configure it. And so I have two notes that have all that information in here. And this I think is like over 300 lines of code to manually generate it. And my task was to automate that deployment. Um, and so as I went through it, I started to collect some issues around it and just note some of the pain points that I had as I went through the current documentation and some things that I found that were broken. And so really what you can see here is that I'm just using this particular folder, this notary GitHub action here, as a way for me to start to collect all the information. And I'm using it as more like a workspace. So like mentally visualize that you have some kind of like workbench, like digital workbench that you're using. And this is like where you're storing all your files or your tools or your project, your woodworking, your clay um, on a work surface. A digital work surface is what I would think of this folder. Um, and so in here, I've just started to create um, all the different notes that I had. Now, before I started doing the work, I actually had to do a research spike to figure out what notary was. And that actually is in the reference. So if you go down here, I had this note on notary and I had all these links that I used to like, um, that I used to learn about the particular project. And I didn't want to lose those links. I didn't take very detailed notes on it because I wanted to skill up pretty quick and just get a general idea of what the project was. But I know this is an area that I'll probably explore more later on. And so I put it in, I moved it in reference. And how I did that, because Dendron is all file based, file name based, is I just use this refactor command. So let's like rewind history and put this back in the project. So I could put this, I could, uh, let's go back. So I wanna move this back into my active project so you can see what the process looked like. So if I hit control, Shift P, Command Shift P on Mac, and type re, start typing refactor. There's this uh, task for Dendron to refactor. So here's the current name, and I'll just copy that. And here's what I want the new name to be. So I want the new name to be uh, P, and I think the project name is Notary GitHub Action. So Notary GitHub Action dot 
notary because it's a node on notary inside the project. And if I click enter, it's actually gonna show me the before and after. So here's what it currently is. Here's what it's gonna be afterwards. And so I'm gonna proceed and we should see that move up into the project folder. So under here, I actually have the notary. So I figured out what notary was and I no longer needed this note inside my workspace. It was kind of like a finished project or maybe you're making a bunch of birdhouses and I've already finished this one. And so I'm gonna move it off my work my workspace just to kind of declutter a little bit, but I don't wanna lose the information. And so that's why I, I went into the refactor and I decided to move this into reference and I didn't know what folder to put it in and itself, I think it's gonna be a top level. So I just um, rename this to our notary. And so now I can move it back into archive. So you can see it's super easy to do this. Now I'm only doing this at a top level, but I could very easily do this at uh, the highest level. I could actually archive this entire project and move this um, notary GitHub action I can refactor this entire thing into the uh, into archive or into reference. So let's say I wanted to archive it, um, just to sh continue to show you this refactoring. So I want to refactor this, and I would just put archive here. And look, everything underneath rearchives into that. So this is probably the the biggest difference and the most game changing aspect from a note taking perspective with Dendron versus some of the other tools because this would be a manual operation where I'd have to update every tag or I'd have to drag and drop files. Notary allows me, or um, Dendron allows me to refactor entire hierarchies into a different place. And that makes moving notes lots, lots easier. So anyway, that's enough of the refactoring. Now let's talk about how this information progressed through my system. So I just canceled out all that operation. We'll just close these windows so we can wrap up the video. Uh, but anyway, as I go through and I'm collecting this information, um, sometimes it might move into areas. And areas is a place that really confused me in the beginning. An area is a place of responsibility that is um, ongoing that you're gonna have. And it's probably most easily thought of as like a role or a title. So currently my current title is Cloud Advocate. So I have a folder in here or a file called Cloud Advocate. And under here I have different things like conferences and the focus areas, um, team strategy and stuff like that. So they're all notes related to my current role. Now if I change roles, my responsibilities change and the notes here in areas will change also. So if I went and got a backend software engineering job, I would probably have some kind of back-end folder in my areas where I would be skilling up in that particular area and collecting things around my team. So that's what it means to be an air, to have an area. Another area for me in a different system that I have is writing or family. And so those are ongoing things that I'm gonna to continue to have and put in there. Like for example, on my, my iPhone, I have an Apple Notes, a folder for family in my areas there, and I have a pancake recipe because I make pancakes on the weekends occasionally. Um, that for the family in the morning. But so that gives you an idea of what the areas are. So it's very likely that some of the things in the secure supply chain might move into this secure supply chain for containers down here because it's relevant. And that's an area that I'm currently focused on. Um, that's a long going story. It's not necessarily a project, but it's an area of focus for me. Um, and so that's why it's in the areas. Now the reference is a little bit different because I did come across some really good Terraform snippets as I automated this infrastructure. So I learned how to capture output from a shell command and I didn't want to lose that. It started in projects underneath this configure um, GitHub action, the notary GitHub action. Um, but I had finished it and I no longer needed it there. So I refactored it, put it into a Terraform, um, a Terraform note so I could reference it. And I, I probably use it three or four times this week honestly, um, and I can even preview it if I wanna make it look pretty with code highlighting and stuff like that. But that's a little code snippet for that. Um, so that's how things move from projects to areas to reference. Now, if it doesn't fit, like maybe I'm not using Vim at all. Um, I've given up on Vim and I, I no longer wanna use it. I could archive this to kind of keep my reference a little cleaner. Um, but what's interesting is your frequency of retrieval starts to go down as the hierarchy goes down, as you start to 
um, descend in these numbers. So I reference my project notes every day. I reference my area probably every other day. My reference is like maybe a couple times a week. And then my archive is like a month, you know, maybe once a month or something. I probably reference archive in my 60 day experiment right now, three or four times. Um, and then you just move things so that down through here. So an example of this was uh, my very first project in my new role was this local development uh, setup CLI that I wrote or, or helped rewrite. And once it was done, I just took a bunch of notes on like a lot of these technologies I had no idea that the CLI was supposed to manip manipulate, um, figured out what they were. I didn't know if I was gonna use that again, so I just archived the entire thing. The glorious thing mm -hmm. is if I start to pick up some more WebAssembly and start learning about Bendel or whatever, um, I can move that back into area or project or archive or whatever pretty easily. Um, so that, that's kind of like the encompassing how I've set up the pair method and how I'm using the pair method with Dendron. I think as a framework, it has a lot of potential. You can implement this in anything from Apple Notes to um, just like straight up text files on your system, which I'm tempted to do um, just to be a pure minimalist. I might do that. That sounds fun. Uh, but yeah, you could use it in any kind of note-taking method. I'm just using Dendron right now. But if you use VS Code a lot, I give Dendron a try. I think it's uh, it might stick for a little while for me before I get bored. Um, you'll see some other files in here. These are what Dendron does. Like it has the concept of a journal, so you can you can create daily notes. It has an idea of a meeting note that you can use a template for, like a scratch space and task. I won't go into those in these videos because I want to keep it focused on the pair method. Um, but if you want me to. Uh, leave a comment down below and hit like if you enjoy the video. So thank you so much for, for listening to me ramble about the Paranethid. I hope you found this informative and thank you for watching.